Boon. Oh yeah, they're at the bottom. Bonjour everyone. Welcome back to the Mac by Channel TV. Welcome to TMC Podcast Episode 10. Isn't it 10? I've got 10 on Double the bottom digits. of the screen there. I hope that's right. Sure Double digits. <laughs> All right. Obviously, we went here last night because of the uh, Everton game, which is obviously we're going to talk about in a minute. We've got loads to get through. The premise of this show is going to be the squad that we have and the clear out that is needed in mm. the summer, in my opinion. After yeah. last night, Deadwood done it. <laughs> needs to go. That's a new nickname. Just made it up on the spot. I like it. Uh, yes. Anyway, we're in our an- Anarchy Brewery, as Yuri. Uh, where? <laughs> as brewery, Yuri. as Yuri. And I haven't even started the, the beer yet, but it's just the smell of it. Who's Yuri, bro? The, the aromas are, mm. are starting to get me on my way. But we're here. Thanks to Anarchy for hosting us. You can scan the QR code in the top corner. Uh, get yourself a pack of war beer and support war flags. Is there any other lovely beers that they do? I never get bored of that one. What's on them? Yeah. Like faith. Nah, Blaine's a faith. One, that, like, tremendous, absolutely tremendous, tremendous stuff. stuff. And as always, thank you, our audio listeners. We are available on uh, Spotify, Apple, Google, all of those podcast platforms. Drop us a like if you haven't already. Let's do it then. Appreciate Let's get straight into it. Okay, okay. Newcastle won, Everton won, somehow, mm. yeah. somehow, yeah. somehow. Those scousers got out of the tune with a draw. Well, I'll tell you how because of Paul Dummett. Really. <laughs> Literally, yeah. that's how, that's how <laughs> ne- the next subject. <laughs> <laughs> that was quick and easy. <laughs> It was Newcastle, Newcastle won, Dummett won, to be fair, yeah. wasn't it? Bloody oh, hell, man, honestly. I need this still after last night, to be honest with you. Yep. Yeah, uh, obviously, all, all the fume is about Paul Dummett, and I agree. Uh, obviously, he, he deserves a lot of the, the negativity, all, all the stick that he's getting. I think it's 100% deserved. We've had our opinions about Paul Dummett in the past, and I think I've been pretty vocal. Uh, when did we start this? About 2017? Probably, <laughs> probably since around about then. That seems like that he <laughs> should, still shouldn't be here. Yeah. Literally, it is. Um, yeah, like, I think before the, the Dummett slander, I think it has to be said, like we, we missed some chances. Like We're at what own fault for not at least being 2-0 up by that point. Aye. At, at least. At like, least. The, the game should have been seen out by that point. Isaac missed a couple of chances and... I think we dominated the majority of the game. I thought we were the better team by far and should have been seen out 2 3 nil, 4 nil, maybe. Like, so, yeah, game should have been out at that point by then. Shouldn't have had to like be talking about a, a, like a last-minute penalty. Like Shouldn't have been at that point. But we are like, yeah, talking about this and for some reason, I, I didn't even get why Paul Dummett came on in the first place. I was like, <laughs> Dummett's coming on. Exactly. I was like, I know we've had some injury problems, but I didn't know things were that bad. <laughs> uh, I know like the last couple of times we've seen him, he, he played really, really well against City and United in the Cup. Centre-back though? Uh, I centre don't know back. why he's playing left-back. That's the thing for me. You know what it is? He came through as a left-back. He was my starting left-back for a good few years. Right. Last uh, century. He, well, certainly last decade. Maybe he's, <laughs> maybe he's the one before. I don't know. He's been here that long. I, I, think, I can't even remember when he came through. It must have been about 2010. Because he scored against Man United in the 3-3, didn't that he? That was like 2012, wasn't it? With a one jacket. About that, eh? I think that was when he was like first coming through to the first year. I think he'd been in and around for a, a little while. When he's around number 36. Yes. No, uh, he is 36. Yeah, because he scored from the edge of the box. Oh. And that was when he kind of put himself on the map. Um, that's how long it's been. Like 12 years, man. At least around about then. Now much has changed in 12 years. But even as a left back, I was never his biggest fan. Like, I think I got a little bit of stick for my negativity around Paul Dummer, but he was never the fastest. He was never, he just wasn't great. He was just a body. He was just someone to fill in that you thought is replaceable. When are we going to sign a left back? But for years, we didn't. We put up with him. And uh, the only time that I've ever really been a fan of him was. Ironically, in the Brucey days, where he played as uh, the, the left-sided centre-back in like a, a back three, I thought right. that was his position because he, he doesn't have to get forward. He doesn't have to be bombing down, putting in shit crosses. <laughs> uh, he, he, yeah, he was just left-sided, left-footed, defending relatively well. Like That was the only time that I've ever felt that he's fit this squad. And I, I did like him in that position. I, I really thought he was good. Um, but that was, what, 2019? 2020. Aye. Good. And that's because good of year ago. anyone who wasn't really, really bad made it look half good. It was like then. Clark, Shaw was there. I think that was pretty much Kieran Clark. Like it was uh, Shaw, Lascelles, and either Dummett or Clark. That was well Aye. back three, really, wasn't it? I mean, I think it was Dummett's second Premier League game in about three years or something last night. Mm-hmm. Uh, appearance, even, not even obviously a start. And that says it all, man. It, it really does. Like, why are you still in and around the squad? And for, for me, it, it is. Um, 
I forgot the word. I've absolutely had a mind blank. What's the word? Sentiment. Uh, it, it, it's sentiment. But he's, he's not good enough. Like, he's rotational. You can be, like, your ninth choice left back if you are scraping the bottom of the barrel. And he can even be your fifth choice left-sided centre back if you're really, really scraping the bottom of the barrel. That is a long old barrel. <laughs> Smelly, <laughs> really rotten is barrel. barrel. But where, where's Target? Has he picked up another injury? He has, I. So... Yeah, Hall obviously had to play. Tino was out. Uh, I'd rather have had Richie. I would, Dumber, that's the Dumber could uh, Burn could have played left back. Like anyone else could have played there. Like when Dummett's coming on to play left back, you know you are scraping. Aye. But there's more, there's more people that I would have had on. Like something else that we could have done to get the second goal. Go, go and punish them. Get get the second Aye. goal that you've been deserving all game long. And you bring fucking Dummett on at left back. Like yeah. I, I don't understand that, but. The only thing that I can really think, other than sentiment, obviously, is a Geordie. Uh, I don't want to hear this English quote of bollocks because my team's full of Brits, English born, like homegrown players. Like, we don't need Paul Dummett in the squad. It's not like Man City carrying Scott Carson until he was <laughs> fucking 61 years old and claiming his pension. Like, Jack Rodwell still at Man City, is he? <laughs> that's it. Uh, Rob, uh, Rob Green at uh, Chelsea. He was going right. to retire. Rob Green was literally going to retire, and Chelsea thought. But he's an English player. Got 30 but, grand, something yeah, like that. coming here to be our fifth-choice goalkeeper right. for the next six years. Don't worry, you'll never have to work every second in the... <laughs> you don't even have to come and train, anyone cares. <laughs> <laughs> anyone's tracking it, Bob. Stay at home. Just do what you want, mate. You should not do what you want. Play you'll be out. Yeah. Uh, I, like, we don't even need to hit that English quote. That we're full of, like, homegrown players. So the only thing is that he's a, a tour guide. Mm. Oh. Cheerleader. Buongiorno. Paul Dummett here. You've seen your Dummett. <laughs> Do you want Send to be sure to ruin the tune, do you? Do you want to take you to fucking Bijou? Do you want to show you where Jordan Shaw got on that night? Do you? Oh, big, come to Big Paul, or you fucking show you how to run. It's because for me, Richie last night is the problem of him coming in at left back. That's 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 where the issue lies, me, mm. because yeah, like you said, I, don't, I wouldn't mind that much if he's the bloody six choice centre back. Right. But when he's the, when, he, when he's any sort of option at left back, you just know he's not. He was, yeah. Like you said earlier, he was never he even good left back, back in his prime. <laughs> So what's he going to be now when he's bloody uh, 30? Well, I don't know how old he is, but he just feels like he's about 50. Uh, he's I, been around I, for so I, long. I've never liked him at left back, and some people like... He hasn't thought, got the legs for it. Yeah, some people thought I was a bit crazy for not liking him at left back, even in his prime, if, that, if you ever came to that. Honestly, you'd have been better off Matt Ritchie, which we've seen come off the bench once mm. or twice this season. Obviously, he scored against Bournemouth, didn't he? Yeah, so yeah. Ritchie at left back would have been a better shout. But what would have even been a better shout for me is this is, the, this is the part where we need to start getting it and where it comes down to removing the dead wood Give a youngster a chance. Yeah. Look what happened with Louis Mayley. Alex Murphy. Now, not everybody is going to be a Louis Mayley, mm? but he could be. He's, not everybody is going to be much worse than Paul Dummett, to be honest with you. No. <laughs> and you just no. mentioned the name I was going to talk about, Alex Murphy. Yeah. Seen him in pre season in America. Yeah, Brilliant. Yeah. Left, quality. left sided centre back. Can't cover it. Put left back. at left back. Huh? Can Or Murphy can play at left back and hit one of them. Just swap one of them. Please just swap one of them. <laughs> I tell you what, Murphy's taller. Would have dealt with young better. Uh? Would have had more pace, energy, a point to prove. Dummett's coming on, but man. You think it was a fucking... even anywhere near him? That's the, that's that, the that's worst thing. Like, that, that's why I'm trying never to, in danger. That's why I'm trying to think like of reasons why he could be in the squad. And sentiment's the only one, because experience is maybe another, but an experienced player doesn't do that. No. Like you've wrestled someone to the ground, WWE style. Jolly Rick would have been proud of it. Aye. Like when <laughs> The ball's knew when, yeah? I know. It That's the worst thing. Really. There was no like, threat whatsoever. That was like a, pro a rookie mistake. Like, you're fucking 49 years old. You've been playing for since fucking 1992. Like, <laughs> what you, like it was it just no experience was shown. And another thing of why I can't understand why he's in the squad, like, last year, it was a bit of an eyebrow raiser as to why Dummett and Richie got one-year extensions. Mm. And we're probably going to talk about that soon. Who's going to stay? Who's going to go? Who's coming out of contract? They both are. They're both coming up to the last uh, few months of that contract. The only reason why I would keep Richie is because he's a better left back option to start with. But Eddie Howe mentioned a good few months ago about like there's like a, a, a leadership WhatsApp group, like the captains Aye. of the team, like have like this group and they all get together and they have meetings and they, they, they discuss the best things for the club. And that uh, Dan Burns in that group, obviously mm -hmm. Lascelles and uh, Trippier. Uh, but Richie's one of them and all. And that was a little bit of a surprising one to see Matt Richie in there. And that makes us realize why he was kept on. Because if he's a leader in the dressing room and someone that the players can get behind and, he, and you know he's happy in that role. Like, you know, like, I was surprised he didn't go to Bournemouth a couple of years ago when he was asked. And 
why he signed that one-year contract last year because I'm sure he would like to play and he knows he's not going to get the minutes at Newcastle. So you can only assume that he's happy in the role just to kind of be that experienced head and, and a leader that like like your Miley's and stuff and your Murphy's and Livermentos can look up to. Mm. Dummett isn't in that group. No. So what the fuck are you doing here? What's the point? No, you're man. not a leader. You've shown yesterday your experience means nout. So you're literally a tour guide. Uh, <laughs> what are you doing here? Dummett to us. <laughs> Dummett to us. Right? Uh, for, for me, I think even then, like that first season after the takeover, that's fine to keep your Dummets and Richies around for me. Oh, yeah, yeah. Look, this is what Newcastle means to everyone. This yeah. is where the toilets are on the training ground. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Do all that. Yeah, We're yeah. nearly three years into the project uh, now. I can't be seeing fucking middle-aged Scottish and Geordie lads not in about the places for the crack. If that's the case, I'll go. Right, I'll be in the dressing room. I'll, I'll send some nice WhatsApps. I'll show you WhatsApp groups. Send you some funny gifts. <laughs> you know I mean? I'll send some good voice notes on a Saturday night. Do you know what, I mean? what, what, what we're doing here? <laughs> and I know where Bijou is. <laughs> I, I can actually now go take him to us. Hotel Mexicana. Yeah, so, uh, next to us. Doing you two or that place. But I got all my dumbest mistake. And that's a thing where you think, I could have understood that mistake if you gave Murphy a chance. And you think, if well, it's he's, a young lad. Yeah, yeah. he's a young lad. He's right. first Premier League. He's going to make mistakes. Dummett's been there, done it for so long. Like, so how, how many times he, he was even just played? he was wrestling with the, the other oldest player in the Premier League. Actually, not <laughs> so that, young. Is that what it was? John was, was it Rick Flair versus fucking Vince McMahon or something? Was it? Honestly, the the thing for oh, just to see see him do that on the re I was in the gallery and that and people were like, oh, what's been called back for? I said, I, I, I expect some maybe more people needed these. <laughs> I can see him pulling them down. <laughs> what's it been pulled back for? And then when <laughs> for I watched the fucking chokes, then when you? I watched it back last night and this morning, I thought, wow, that's way worse than I even <laughs> thought it was. Like, I can't believe how bad. And I went in on him last night. Now <laughs> the cross is miles high. He's nowhere near us. Because Dubravka is like comfortably getting the ball, and then Dubravka is looking around thinking, why well, is referee whistle? I've got fouls. Right? <laughs> didn't even we went it. on the counter and then he scored. <laughs> hey, my days, man. Honestly, pulled him it so. <laughs> We'll get into that soon. Why, obviously, it's it's time to get rid of the legs of Dummett, have a clear out. Let's just quickly uh, brief over the rest of the game. Alexander Eza puts us in the lead. Fantastic finish. Mm -hmm. Unreal. Again, I was there looking at that thinking, he's going to score Yeah, Even though he had three players to take on, I thought, this is going in. Yeah, yeah. Didn't really Slots well. Slots in the bottom corner. Brilliant. We've also got to talk about this, though, because people, when I was uh, standing in Dummett and I put the clip up on Instagram and stuff, you're obviously always going to get bait back. And people were saying, "Oh, but what, what about what about mentioning Isaac's missing? What about not putting my chances away?" It's, again, people defending Dummett. See, back in the day when he was playing left back, I was slagging him <laughs> off. Dummett defense league, and people didn't want to hear DDL. it. Now it's fucking nine years later, and you're still defending him. Like, what's going? What's with this Dummett love? Like, I don't understand <laughs> it. Obviously, fucking Eddie House falling victim to it now. Like, DDL. What, what's he doing? Is he like hypnotic or something? Is he just teasing people? Is he fucking a stage magician? Fucking Kenny Craig from uh, Little Britain. Fucking look, looking, at, <laughs> looking at me eyes gives a new contract. <laughs> look at me eyes, Daddy. Not around the eyes. Look at me eyes. You're under. Oh, one year deal. There you go, son. Oh, lovely chest. 50 grand a week. Jesus Christ, I. I'm going to get new merch made, actually. DDL. Dumb at Defence League. Come and see. <laughs> I'm sure they'll sell out. Everyone's well, a big fan. Everyone loves big dumb. Dumb. Could have pop. <laughs> made a fortune. But I, honestly, when you look at um, Dumb's performance last night, and you, I, I get it with the with the other things, right? You know, we should have put the game to bed. I was saying it at half time, even. We need a second. And then after half time, we do get a second. He's actually just offside, which again, that rule's a bit mad and harsh for me. Like, because you can't score with your arm and it's his elbow that's offside. Mm. So, oh, yeah. So that's Man, that's a I bit shite, that, that for me. Yeah. I think Isaac should that's a quick free tick, but he quick free kick, but he should be a bit more aware to like read the judges run and, and he, watch he that did lane. But look like he'd done it though. He did bend his, uh, his run, but he's literally he's not just elbow enough. Off, and it's just it's frustrating, like um. It is frustrating. People are saying something about the recording quality looks absolutely fine on our end. Like, yes, it is blurry. It looks fine. First check on YouTube. It looks absolutely perfect. 4K, where we are. Like, <laughs> so hopefully that's all right. But I don't know why people are saying that it's blurry. Strong internet connection and 4K. Oh, it is a little bit blurry. It is a bit blurry, eh? What's all about? Who knows? Well, Not very much what we do about it. Now we're going to do because it's absolutely crystal clear on our end. Yeah. <laughs> that's weird. Is that like really weird? Um, Apologies. Let's see if we can try and fix that for you. Uh, it should be absolutely Maybe it's just it? a signal in here. It's just a, a little bit like a fucking tinge head in it. All right, but it's been out every other week, hasn't it? True. Oh, well. As long as you can hear, well, that's the main thing. Uh, it's a podcast. You can listen to Spotify. <laughs> and we'll try and get that sorted for next week. Oh, God almighty. Um, but I... Isaac missed chances. Newcastle, you know, that one where it's off the line is a bummer. Like, Isaac's got to put that away. But again, yeah. the goal scored in the first off, like, you're not going to score every single chance you get, like, to be honest. Nah. Um, it, was, it was well defenders. Like, yeah, he maybe he's going to put it to one side or the other. But 
it's it's one of them things. I think he was just trying to rush it. Like I didn't think he thought like that. What he, I think he'd done the hard part. I think it was just finding the little bit of composure, but I think he maybe thought that someone was going to come in for the tackle. He, he didn't know who was behind him. Uh, he snatched it a bit, didn't so, he? So, yeah, he maybe just snatched it, just trying to get it done quicker and, yeah, could have put it one side or the other, but it, it was it was well defended. But uh, I just want to go back to the Burns goal and it, we can talk about this until something's done, which might be when Dummett retires. It's fucking never. Never. Uh, but VAR, like, I hate VAR and, like, for... Things like that where you've got to like analyze it and like yeah 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 judging like the width of a fanny's hair like I, I don't like VAR was brought in to check clear and obvious errors. I think when you're drawn off sidelines and having to like minimize it, trying to see if there's a, a millimeter of elbow just straight in that line. Like I think that like go with the referee's original decision. Yeah. Like when you're pro- the na- linesman's right when, there. When you're narrowing millimeters, trying to fucking see if someone's just a action off like it's obviously not clear and obvious no like if you're having to do that if you're having to zoom in to try and look at pixels it it's on side no just just play the advantage like, I, I don't understand that because there's not much of an advantage for Isaac to have his elbow for the right exactly. you can't score it's with not your elbow so, it's not going right. to change anything that happened in the goal yeah i think if there's a clear like if it foots offside or something or if, if there is like a a, bit, a bit more of if the body part or over, over but, whatever, right? like I say, when you're zooming in trying to like look at millimeters then it's not clear and obvious no. like just let it go man like it's ruining the game Damien fucking heaven um, someone who was brilliant last night was that goal scorer for me Dan Byrne I thought he was excellent at centre back yeah, yeah. He had a really really good game at centre back he should be playing <laughs> centre back it's mad oh, it's strange when you put players in their actual position I know instead of having them play left back that's one criticism and listen I've back Eddie Howe on Sky Sports yesterday and the clips are out there on social media now but there is moments and there is things like that where you, you know, it taking so long to get Lewis Hall in, who was mm-hmm. pretty good last night before he went off. Um, and then things like Dan Bain and then bringing Dummett on at left back. It just look at what's happening now, playing Bain as a centre back after all this time wasting Lewis Hall as a left back <laughs> and making, you know, Botman play through injury when yeah. Bain could have just slotted in and Hall could have came in. And uh, yeah, in hindsight, so, uh, like, like, it's Bain, easy in hindsight as well. Like, like, like Botman was awful because you like we know now that he was playing through injuries and I think we knew it at the time as well. But I say, Dan, like, they were both shit. Mm. Like, Byrne was just bang out of form because he's not a left back, and Botman was shite because he was injured. Oh, so what do you do? I'll put ba- Byrne uh, back into his actual position instead of forcing him to play as a left back because he was good last year. <laughs> so, it's, like, it's like back in the dumber thing. Oh, he was decent in fucking 2012, oh, so we'll just play him again new in 2024. Doesn't, yeah. doesn't make sense. Yeah. Like, I, Byrne was good last year, but he's been shite this season. So put him back in his natural position and even put Tino's been on the bench for a lot, lot of time. Like, exactly. I know he's injured yeah, now, but like, was there's options even when Target was fit, Target wasn't getting the game. Like, it doesn't make sense. No, it doesn't make any sense. Someone who else who came into the to the lineup was Elliot Anderson, who I thought was strong last night, man. I thought he was really impressive. Elliot you Anderson. surprised the same start? Willock getting a rest? Ah, because Willock's just been crap for me. Mm. You now he's came out from injury, he's been so poor. Mm. And I, I heard yesterday, I don't know how true it is, that he's still carrying Knox as well, still carrying a bit of a Probably groin is, issue. Yeah. And it looks that way because he just yeah. doesn't look the same player for me. It is good to say, um, uh, Anderson and Hall both get a start because right. like the last two games when they've came on at subs have looked really fresh and like right. really give like a burst of energy. Hundred percent. So yeah, it's, it's, I'm pleased that they got a start because uh, deep down, like I know we didn't really have much choices, especially with Hall. But I, I, I was surprised to see Anderson start. But as it, he's deserved it. He's, he's been class uh, the last couple of games he's been on as a sub since he's came back from injuries. The little cameos that he's had look really fresh, really sharp. So I buzzing for it. And like I say, Willock hasn't been in the best of form and. It, it, that's kind of against like the sort of Eddie Howe loy- loyalism as we've spoke about over the last mm. few weeks and it, it just again a, a minute ago about Dummett playing as a left back and Botman playing injured like Eddie Howe has been a bit of a loyalist but last night he kind of flipped that a little bit and it was good to see I think it was a good performance obviously result disappointing but as we said before it was a defensive mistake and up front we should have had the game put to bed uh, before like we should have been 3-0 up and if we were 2-3-0 up then no one would be complaining everyone would be talking about an amazing performance yeah. how good Hall is how good Anderson is like Isaac had an unreal game Dummett was class at the back like no one would have complained Aye. We, well, just, we just brought Dummett on yeah because <laughs> that's what fucked up it, it, it came down to it, it, you have to take your chances at this level even yeah. against a crap team like Evan because in, no other, cool, like. in other in other games you know you think when you go to Man City or you play Liverpool at home, you think, I ah, we need to take the chances here. Yeah. Even though I want to look, you always 
susceptible for, mm. for an equaliser. And you've seen that. To be fair as well, we didn't have no subs to me. The bench was two keepers, two kids against Diallo <laughs> Parkinson. Gillespie's on the bench, you know what I mean? You've got all these um, players that are out, 12 players out. Sky put that graphic up, the, the 11 Aye, that well, was out. Starting 11's unreal. I know, injured starting 11's <laughs> Injured amazing. 11's class. Um, so you look at that and you think... That's going to fault that before the game. I was thinking that's going to really hold us back. And then it did because on the half an hour mark, to be fair, Daesh could actually make some decent subs. Now he brought on Andre Gomez, who was a good player a couple of years ago. Yeah, he's yeah. a good player, but he's been out of form, obviously. Dominic Calvert Lewin, likewise, exactly the same thing mm-hmm. I've just said. Yeah. He scores the pen. I think Giraffe should have saved the pen. To be fair, he got a hand to it, but he, he got a good hand to it. it. Like, yeah. but, um, but when they've got options off the bench like that, and we had zero, and we've yeah, wasted yeah. so many chances, so many times in the final third. Yeah, the only decent player that we had was Willock. Like I say, he's been right, out of form. And he's been way off it. So. People are asking about Longstaff in the chat, asking about Longstaff online, getting loads of palatas again because he was absolutely crap again. Because uh, <laughs> the thing he's with, injured. The thing he's with getting injections. Uh, it's not getting, really getting his fault. His I, kind of, man. I, kind of, I kind of blame Longstaff. It's like dumb, um, Botman. Right. But you can't really blame someone for bad performances when that just well, squad numbers are limited. Like You've said like we've got a, a solid start and 11 of injured players. Mm. So the players that are playing... Are playing injured like Willock probably isn't fully fit, and we know Longstaff isn't fit. Eddie House said a couple of weeks ago he's having injections, so slate Longstaff all you like, but it, I feel like that comes down to Eddie Howe. Like he's playing him injured, no one finding well that he's injured, but then again, it comes down to lack of options. So I think Howe's hands are tied. Longstaff can't really do that about it, but try and persevere. So what do people want me to do? Like we haven't got any options, no, so I, I don't get what people expect. I think uh, Saturday, if we can, I would go with uh, this time resting Longstaff instead of Willick, bring him in and have mm. Bruno, Willick and Anderson. I think that's a nice midfield three to head to Craven yeah. Cottage. Yeah. Because Longstaff clearly needs a rest. You know what I mean? Uh, John's mentioned Alfie Harrison. I think, was I don't think he was on the bench last night, but again, no. he's highly rated. But I think he'll maybe take a little bit of time because he was just a January signing, wasn't he? Aye. And like all the others, like your, your Murphy's, Diallo, Parkinson, have been around for a little while. Aye, they have. Um, even um, Travis Herney's, like he's been there. Mm-hmm. Like, so yeah, it might might take time for uh, Harrison. If he gets on the bench, then great. If not, then like I say, it's just Eddie Howe's not going to throw people in. Like Lewis Hall's a prime example. Like, he's not just going to hide people in at the deep end. He's going to like make sure that they're ready. He's going to take his time developing them to the point that he feels that they're comfortable to play a Premier League game. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I don't expect to say Harrison anytime soon, but if Howe feels that he's good enough and developed enough and he's ready to get a spot on the bench, then we're good. You, you, you won't be seeing these two anytime soon either because uh, last night Eddie Howe confirmed that Tino Livermento and oh. Maggie Almiron will be out for a month. Okay. So there's great news just when he obviously <laughs> Tino's <laughs> injury against West Ham, by the way. Uh. Literally a ball hitting off his ankle and now he's exactly he's out for a month. Yeah. It was just, not What's just, that, his, just his ankle. I think it just it just buckled a bit, I think, didn't it? Crazy, man. Another that freak injury. Miggy obviously came on, came off. Yeah. Um, we know that trip. Yeah, was so close to making that West Ham team. I thought he might have actually played last ah, night. Yeah, he I had thought he was on the bench, eh? but he he's gonna be he, off for Fulham. Eh? I thought he was gonna be on the bench for West Ham. Like, ah, we'll wait until we'll wait until Tuesday and he can play Tuesday. Mm. That's what I heard. And then he's just had a setback. Now he's gonna be out for a couple of weeks as well. Very good. Gonna miss this the obviously Fulham game this week. Kind of miss his ex team Tottenham the following Saturday, you'd think, and then the hope that he's going to be back for Palace midweek on the 24th, whatever it is. Yeah, man, just played Dummett. We'll be playing Dummett, eh? <laughs> just not a left back, yeah. second back at least. Captain Dummett at the back. <laughs> <laughs> right then, let's uh, get the hell away from that Everton game and talk about the squad listing keg. <clears throat> Who are we going to, well, to kind of maybe just do a keep sell alone and just go through this squad. And we'll also obviously touch on the lone players that are out at the minute amongst other teams, like the Ryan Fraser and stuff. But uh, are these included in that list? Are they at the bottom of the lower yeah, players? Yeah, they're, they're all, all, they're all in? the bottom. Right. The, bottom right. the, the far ones that contract. We'll get onto the uh, we'll get onto the uh, squad now. Then we'll start. We'll start off from the top, and we'll do a. Uh, Start from the top now. We'll, yeah. do, we'll finish off with those lone players. So Dubravka. I don't keep myself. Yeah, keep sell alone. Um, is it good? Backup option, like he's a he's a fine number two, but I'd probably sell him. Like he's, I, I don't know, he's about thirty four now, something like that. And like thirty five, I think. I think he wants to move on now. Now they're yeah, going to more first team. He's pushing on a little bit, and yeah, he, he knows he's only going to be the number two. I, I think we should have sold him about a year ago. To be fair, like, I think when we brought Pope in, he's he's too good to be a number two, when he can be a fine number one elsewhere. Mm. Um, 
but yeah, he's, he's one of them to take or leave. Like, I couldn't really give that much of a shit, to be honest. But I think you still get a decent value from from being 35, 34, 35, whatever he is. Like, he's still a fine goalkeeper. I think you'd, yeah, you're not going to get much more than 7 million for him. But no, really I think for that life. value, that 5, 7 million, if you can get that for a keeper of his age, it's it's decent. Not nine us will probably sell him for like 700,000. But yeah, uh, he got a year left on his contract now, don't he? Yeah, uh, there, so, so yeah, if, if we've got five million for him, then I, I think that's a bargain. Uh, I'd snap your hands off, that. yeah, absolutely snap your hands off. For us. So, a couple, yeah. of, couple of games when he's he's been really good, and a couple more than a couple, he's been horrendous, yeah. So, uh, I'm done yeah. with the nah, man. yeah, Deadwood, I agree, yeah, I'd get rid. I wouldn't call him Deadwood, Deadwood, Dubravka, but uh, yeah, <laughs> we, can, we can definitely move on from Dubravka. I'm not gonna be mad at that one. Trip, yeah, Keith, we don't have to do much on that, do obviously. We had a, you had a chance to move in January by, yep. Le- by Leverkusen, by Munich, yep, next uh, one, Paul Dummett. <laughs> <laughs> who is out of contract uh, in June so Dummit Defence League DDL give him another yeah go on <laughs> give him another yeah tell you what <laughs> definitely not please hell no I know. even I said though I you know, the other day on the all. video I, I said oh Dummit's going to get another contract extension now because obviously the sales and bottom for nine months uh, and I was like it's not that bad because if he's just floating about he can come in for the odd game but after last night no 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 <laughs> yeah I, have but I, I, I can see it <laughs> I can actually see him getting a new uh, one year deal I can deal. see it I think he will for the third year in a row well, yeah, honestly I think he will I don't know why I scratched my head all the way around and I could have just done that <laughs> but, <laughs> but uh, who else is kind of run dumb to us exactly dumb to us I, I, th- I think he will get another contract extension I really do yeah. and I, I wouldn't if it was up to me I would sell Sven Bartman keep Shaw keep the cells, obviously, we're going to have to keep now because of the injury. Yeah, literally, yeah. The cells would be we should one have of them. Like, him in January now. I would yeah. have cashed in on him. Cashed. Yeah, I think maybe in the summer he'd be one of them fringe players, but like he'd be one of them that I'd kind of want to keep around for a depth and be leadership. Yeah. Like, he, like so he's one of them in the WhatsApp group. He's, 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 WhatsApp, actually, he? he's actually the club captain. Like, right. people forget that he's actually the club captain, has been for, well, since the Rafa days. Uh, I think Rafa oh, appointed him the, the captain would have been about 2017 or something he's when been, he got pumped the, away at Southampton yeah, and 16, he was the only one that stood up. he's been the club captain um, so yeah uh, experience uh, leadership decent depth so I would keep him depending on the transfer fee like if someone comes in with a good enough offer then nah, pack your bags you there alright pack your bags see you later but no one is going to do for the next six to nine months so <laughs> yeah. in. Jordan obviously we hope he keeps he's, just, he's yeah I got another year left contract but... talks isn't he with yeah. that extension it's taking a long time but hopefully we'll get good news on that soon I'm confident he will sign a new deal yeah and he's out until 2025 so he's in contract so if he demands a transfer because he's not going to get his contract I think we'll get decent money for him I oh, think, definitely I think we'll at least get what we're paid for him which a few year ago like everyone when he was shite when we paid the 40 million for him yeah, and he was playing up front for Steve Bruce everyone was like yeah just sack him just take the 40 million loss <laughs> but uh, now nah, now he's proved that he's worth every penny of that 40 million so I think if he if we're not going to offer him a new contract and someone wants to come in with 40 50 million then see you later unfortunately but yeah I, I hope we do uh, re-sign him keep him long term uh, and yeah he's a definite keep Sounders Tonali, keep, obviously, hopefully he's back in August and doesn't get a further ban, but we're yeah. obviously going to keep him because he wouldn't get any money from him now, and yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing him back. I can't wait to see him hopefully do well. Yeah, hopefully his accounts have been deleted. <laughs> uh, number nine, Callum Wilson. Interesting Ooh, one, this. It is an interesting one. So this is the one. first real interesting one for it me. It is. Person, so. person, personally, I would keep because, again, depth. And I think we spoke about it a few weeks ago. Like, even if he's my third choice... You know he can put the ball in the back of the net. No, he just he just needs to stay fit. Like, and we've probably said it every single fucking week. We need three strikers. And we always should have had three strikers. Getting rid of Wood without a replacement was foolish. Not even trying to get Ekatiki on loan or anybody in January. I, I know FFP tied with hands in January, but not having three strikers is a major, major crime in my opinion. Mm. Uh, and, and Wilson, he's Premier League proven. In any time he gets on the field, he knows where the back of the net is. So. Now the fucking injury. <laughs> he knows where the medical tent is, eh? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I would, I would keep him for that unless we're going to sign two new ones. That's what I'm thinking. We need at least one. If we sold Wilson, then we'd have to buy two. So I would keep him around for another year as my third choice because, as, like I said, Premier League proven. That's where the net is. It's all good things. Checks all the boxes for me. The only box that he doesn't tick is his health. Right. So if we did decide to cash in on him, then fair play. I'm not going to put up too much of a fight. But I think we should keep him around until we'll sign at least one more and then we can look to replace him in the year. I mean, Wilson's missed, I think it's around 50% of his games at Newcastle United, yeah, which is insane. way, way below what I was expected. I mean, you kind of be putting up their numbers when and beat it. What is it? He's missed half his time, yes? He's missed a couple of years out during injury or something like that. Like, 
He's but records more, horrendous. Than Mike Malone. He's brilliant goal scorer, but oh, he's, yeah. he's just forever injured. So it's pointless yeah. now. I'm, uh, this is what I mean about I'm being done with these players. I'm not going to call Wilson exactly dead because he's been a great player for no, us no, yeah. when fit. He's yeah, also been great the thing, at being injured. But if he's third choice, then he might not be on the field as much, so he that's, might not that's get as many it. injuries. I mean, because <laughs> if he's sporadic, it's going to be a lot of money to replace the legs of Karen Wilson stuff to find someone who's a proven Premier League goal scorer, which he is. It's not going to be cheap. So if he was happy to sit there, be third choice, come off the bench for 20 minutes every other week, play mm -hmm. the odd cup game, yeah. that's great. Do that. But yeah, that, that, that that's, that's all I'm saying. See, I can't see us doing that or, or him agreeing to that, to be honest so with I, you. I think he's on quite a big contract now, isn't he? So yeah, I think 80 grand a week or something. Yeah, yeah so I think 80 grand for a third choice strike guy is a, uh, is a lot. Like, So uh, that's what that's I'm saying. We're not going to do it. If we're cashed in on them, then it's fair enough. But you could start in any championship team, any lower league, Premier League team, like 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 Luton or something like that. Like, start from, I think West Ham big move from. I, it, you can play Ham? for most Premier League teams if fit in every single championship team. Uh -huh. You'd walk into a championship team. I mean, a few years ago, he's linked with teams. Arsenal, Chelsea, yeah, and then yeah. he's at Bournemouth when he's at us. He just needs to stay fit. He just, he's injury record. It's horrendous. And yeah. it pulls him back. And so I did not use 80 grand wages off. And yeah, fair enough. But yeah, it's a it's an expensive third choice option. I got a bit of stick for saying it in January that we should have let him go to Atletico and we should have replaced him. But uh, now I think everyone's getting on it because everyone here is saying sell, sell, yeah. pop an arm leg, sell, sell. <laughs> Why keep up here? That's always injured. Carl Wilson only starts 50% of his games, and that's a real stat. Mm -hmm. um, keep Wilson just... renting, he's had too much drink. <laughs> but it's just because we've got any fucking options. Wilson 32 and injured 90% of the time. Most of his goals are pens. That's a bit hard. That's what I'm saying. Like, we haven't got other options, though. Like, I say, if we sell him, we're going to have to sign two because we need to sign one anyway. So, why would you sell a striker when we haven't got any options? Exactly. That, sell that's... Wilson, get Tesco, now that would be absolutely ideal. But then we still uh, need to sign someone else. But then we still release some. Yeah, we need two. What, that, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> if you sell Wilson, you need to buy two. Uh, so I would keep him around for a year as my third choice striker, get a second choice in, someone who can compete with Isaac, and then uh, replace Wilson in a year down the line. Sorry, when's, the he, audience, that's when's his contract? 25. So he's out of contract next year anyway. You're not so going to get You either cash in on him. Either, really. Yeah, you either cash in on him or give him a one year contract for the next 49 years, like Paul Dummett. <laughs> but yeah, like I, I, would, I would maybe keep him on. Until next year, even if he goes on a free, sign someone this summer, knocks Wilson down to third choice, then even let him go on a free, or you give him a one year extension and try and sell him for whatever you can get from him, even if it's fucking five million. Like, mm. It's better than that, isn't it? No, it is better than that. It is better than that, indeed. So let us know. That's the, that's the real uh, debate one so far. So let me know in the comments, uh, like you have done, and then if you're watching it back, fair enough, black and white there, saying take away his pens, Matty. Look at his record. Pay as you go, says Ian. That would be great. Andy Carroll. Ah, yeah. Andy right, Carroll, absolutely. pay as you go. Yeah. He's never going to agree to that, though, is he? Nah. And if he obviously, he's too if good you've, for that. You've got that interest again, like after to go Madrid, like you had in January. Oh. Pwah. Yeah. If that's a great move for him. It would be amazing move to be fair. They've got some right. money for us, then happy days. Yeah. Number 10, Anthony Gordon, obviously keep. 11, Matt Ritchie. Another one that's going to apparently be let go of the club of... Well, the rumours are that, you know, Ritchie and that's going to... It's going to be his last season, but then yeah. everything could change. Another injury could change. Another injury could change that. I yeah. think Richie times up though, and I would sell most definitely. This is the epitome of Deadwood, and again, Richie's been good for over the years, but not four years. Bit no, far, bit no, poor player yeah, now for like two, yeah. three, four years. What the hell is the point, man? Yeah, waste of a squad number, waste of wages. Yes. I can't remember what it was. I should have saved it, but the stats or the numbers are, are mad. Where you look at the players. That are picking up so much money at Newcastle and doing now. Mm -hmm. Richie on 40 grand a week. You obviously got Hayden, Hendrick. Hendrick's definitely obviously finishing this summer. Hayden, Hendrick, 40, 50 grand a week on these players. You know, your Mark Lesby's and stuff, who's meant to be getting another year. 30 grand a week <laughs> on him. Ryan Fraser's at Southampton, 50 grand a week. These players, so all this money adds up and you could literally save, get rid of these five, six players, save 200, 300 grand and put that on mm -hmm. two, three quality players. So yeah. there's six absolute useless lumps of crap. Yeah. Well, my, my thing with Richie, and I absolutely agree. He is dead wood. He's bottom of the barrel. Doesn't even get any game time. Deserves to go. Had his time. He's been here for over 10 years. He was probably about 2012, 2013 signing or something. Like that, wasn't he? Like, maybe it's not that long ago, but it feels like he's been here since the dawn of time. Matt Richie, yeah. He's uh, not doing even that. Um, that but the, the only reason I would consider keeping him is A, leadership. <laughs> uh, like I so say, he's part of that uh, captain's group. Um He's more versatile, so he can play left back. He can be your fifth choice left back, and he can be, no, no. And, and he can play either wing and all. He's more probably comfortable on the right wing. He played there for Rafa, and he can play left wing as well. So he's more versatile. He's got leadership. If you extend him to a one year deal, but cut his 40 grand wages well in half, then I would consider it. But yeah, he's 
he's, he's dead wood. He's, oh, he's not he's, really. He's, I mean, not, he's, he's not. He's thirty four. Something, only. He? He's got to be. Hey, when was he born? Gordon Ramsay. Like, it, in, the, the right wing again, man. It's, nah, I'm not having this. Yeah. I've, got, I've got to see the end of Matt Ritchie. Man. Yeah, I've got him. Man. I've got him, man. Uh, Matt Target. I'd sell him if we got it. If I'd sell if him, he's not offer. clean. I, I don't get what it is. I think he's Target. I, I like him. I, I really, really like him. I thought that she's a. He's obviously not going to play ahead of a Hall or a Tino or mm. even fucking Ben at this point. But, uh, <laughs> you know, he, he, we've seen how good he was in, on a loan spell and we've paid good money from him. He's on good yeah. wages now, 70 grand a week or something. Yeah, probably. Like, when, when he was People on, were trying to say he was on 90. I don't think he's on that much. Nah. Like when he was on loan, he was grand class week, and say. everyone called for him to be signed permanently and we'd done it. I thought that was brilliant business, but he got an injury early. Obviously, he lost his spot to Burn last season because it was class. But he did have a long term injury. Even when he got back in, Burn was that good that he couldn't get a spot. Um, and then he had, he's been out for the majority of this year and all. But even when he was back for a few weeks, he wasn't getting that spot back when Burn wasn't playing well. Mm. It's like, well, where do you lie? Like, again, like, he's a good player. Uh, and if we'll get a good offer, then I would sell him, uh, which I do think is unfortunate because I, I, I think he's underrated. I, I really do like uh, Matt Richard, uh, Matt Target. I think he's a good Old player. But uh, obviously, he's ahead in the peck and order at left back than uh, what Richie and Dummett are. Mm -hmm. So if, if, you're talk, if you're splitting hairs, then Matt Target keeps a spot for me, but he's one of them that, if I say, if you get a good offer, then uh, he, he's off. I think you could get Ari money from Matt Target. Like, I do. We do paid 15, I think, overall 15, with the right? loan fee. So if you got 9, 10. It's perfect for like, you know, if your leads, have, leads came up or something. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what their left back situation is like, but a newly promoted side... Or even someone who's flirting around in you know, Nottingham Forest or something. Yeah. Someone like that, 10, 15 yeah, yeah. million for Target for, for a Forest or a, one of those type of sides. Yeah, I think I think, be, I think it'd be lucky to get 10. Like, I, I don't think we're going to get one money back. So yeah. even, even if we got seven or eight, then to, I think it's a decent offer for him. Like, it's, it's, it's one of them, like, if you get like a seven or eight million, you consider it like a thing. Like, eight is, million plus like, add-ons. Is he worth keeping around in the squad for a little while? Like, Because he, he, he's good and you don't want to take that big of a loss on him. It was only a year and a half ago we, we paid the remainder of the fee. I think it was around about 12 million with a 3 million loan fee or something like that. <laughs> uh, so yeah, you don't really want to cut that big of a loss, but I, don't know, I, I think it's worth just keeping around for the squad, like unless you're going to get a really good offer. Because uh, he is a good body to have. And I, I think if you get rid of your riches and dumbest, then he is someone that can step in. So with, with Target though, I, I'll say keep you. What did you say? Yeah, keep keep unless you get a good offer. Like he's one of them kind of... On, on the fence kind of players right. like he's taking or leave it really like he's he's whatever Isaac obviously keep 100% uh, yeah. uh, rumoured you know that Arsenal eyeing him up for 100 million pounds oh why haven't you fuck clean off <laughs> <laughs> double it 200 million and maybe it'll talk yeah. we still won't <laughs> now we've got to keep a hold of Isaac obviously yeah. we'll talk about that more in a different video uh, Harvey Barnes keep yeah because he's seen what he can do when he's back from injury Emil Kraft just signed a new deal, didn't he? Just a couple of weeks ago. So he was, I think he was out of contract this year. Uh, uh, which is so, like a crap last couple of games. So he's, he's obviously kind of in the plans. Um, so yeah, again, if you get an offer from, I think back in the Brucey days, I think when he paid about three million for him. So I think again, if you, but he's, he's a solid national player. He always plays for Sweden. No. So again, if you get a three to five million offer, you've got to consider it. But now that we've got Tino, who's going to be the eventual replacement of Trippier, you've got Trippier, uh, Livermento. We've also got Alfie, um, Harris Nashby exactly. as well. This is where you need to start looking at it, man. So, yeah, like, you know, I've always been a, a craft defender. I'm, I'm in the, the craft defense league. KDL. Jo join, join the club. We've got t shirts. <laughs> Cra craft defense league all day long. Rep it all day. He's not from Newcastle, so you won't get any faith in that. Man. Uh, that's no true. Man. I'll, I'll, I'll start selling him in Stockholm. Aye. I'm going to immigrate. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I think for squad depth, he's brilliant. I think he's underrated. Can play centre back if need be. Obviously, he had a bit of a howler against uh, West Ham. But yeah, squad depth. If he's if we need someone, you keep him around. If not, you get five million off. Fuck him off. You have to move on in life, man. You've got to get rid of the dead wood. Yeah. Craft, not really. The, but for me, you've got Harris Nash. You come back. I want to see what the young lads have got to offer. I yeah, know what Craft's yeah. doing. I've seen the last two games. <laughs> been shite. Right. So I've had enough. When you're, when I, I you're looking think it's bizarre the, giving them that new deal. Bizarre. When, when, when you're trying to, if you rank what players, if you're trying to think visually about what best players and you go to the bottom, Kraft's in that argument. And he, like, you're looking at your Dummets, Richies, your Carius, Gillespie's, and then Kraft. Kraft's in and amongst that kind of bottom group, like your bottom five players. Mm. So, yeah, if you're looking at it like that, then yeah, if you get a decent offer from, then you've got to sell. Carius, I would sell, but he's going to go anyways. His contract runs out and he's last isn't happy that there's no direct fights to Milan. 
Fuck she nothing. came out last week and said she doesn't like uh, him being in Newcastle because obviously she's in Italy presenting on yeah, BN Sports, a, whatever she yeah. does. So Carius has asked his uh, agent to get him a club in Italy. So he's leaving. Now I would sell him anyway because That's he fine. never gets a game time. Lewis Hall keep, all the long Tino keep, yeah. Pope keep. But Jacob, Hall, Hall's still on loan though, to be fair. Like he needs to make sure that permanent uh, uh, deal gets it's signed. It's an happen, obligation, yeah. isn't right. it? But it's, it's a lot of money, 28 million or something like that, isn't it? Uh, it's going to happen. Uh, Jacob Murphy then, keep Lewis Hall, keep Tino, keep Pope. Jacob Murphy next. Can we go back to Pope for a second? Let's do it. How long is he going to be the number one for? Well, this is the thing because obviously we're heavily linked with Aaron Ramsey, aren't we? Yeah. So I, I, I like Pope and I think when we signed him, he was a... At the time, I didn't know how big of a upgrade he was on Dubravka, but he showed us. Like, I think he's what I liked about him more than Dubravka was his like collection. Like we spoke for years on the Magpie right. channel about how nervy we got when like balls came in from Dubravka. Sometimes he, his decision making was terrible. Like great shot stopper, kept him in the Premier League for many years under Steve Bruce. But when a ball came in, he didn't know whether to come for it or stay or punch it or catch it, and he often made the wrong decision. But Pope was solid. And he's a big unit, like six foot six, six seven or something. Like some saves that Carius has let in, and what Dubravka has let in. You just thought Pope's long arms probably would have saved them. Like the Carabao Cup final, I think one of maybe it's both goals. I, oh, I, I think Pope would have saved, but he's a bit iffy. And I think his distribution, is, his distribution's a bit shit. Sometimes his decision making is a little bit shit. Like the red card before the cup final, like right. that was stupid. Right. Um, Outrageous. That. Yeah. I, 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 I think we can move on from Pope. Like, maybe it's not this summer. I think next year's his final year. Cause you, you can't really talk about ages for goalkeepers because they can push on well into their late 30s. Um, but for outfield players, anyone over 30, you start thinking, mm, I'm getting over the hill a little bit. And Pope's, I think, 31. So he's over 30, a little bit iffy, picked up a couple of injuries in the past couple of years. This is the problem that uh, I was so, going to say, is that how well is he going to recover? I, I, I'd be starting to look at a replacement. And it doesn't have to be this summer. I think you'll do a fine job next year, but mm. he's not a long-term guy for me. Like I think if there wasn't FFP, he would replace him this summer. Yeah. He would get in that ball-playing goalkeeper that yeah. everyone wants now because it's the training thing to do, but it makes sense, and that's the modern game. So I think you would look towards who I would like to see would it be Mama Dishvili. Mm. From uh, the Spanish league there, the Georgian keeper. So I would yeah. I would get him in all day long, or obviously we'll with Ramsdale. Ramsdale's a, a bit, money, but again he's better with his feet. He's better. I, I like Ramsdale and distribution uh, and everything. But I uh, don't know what their deal is with uh, David Rea because he's only on loan. Uh, so I don't but, know uh, what the crack is there, but he's obviously, obviously lost his Ramsdale spot, wants so. to go on because he's not getting the game. Yeah. Too. So yeah, but, I, I would take Ramsdale, but you got to start a way up. How big of an upgrade is he on Pope? Uh, like if you're going to upgrade, you you want a, a, a significant one. Like, say, I think Pope was a. A little bit of a one over Dubravka, not a massive one. So I think Pope uh, Ramsdale again. He's probably a little bit of an upgrade over Pope. Whereas, like, do you think like, do you keep him for another year and then make a big money signing if FFP comes into us? Like, I think, like I said, I think if you if you could afford to, you'd get a new keeper this year. But I think we've got to prioritize mm -hmm. elsewhere. We're gonna to have to prioritize centre back now. The two yeah. injuries to Lascelles and, yeah. and Botman. That's We're right, gonna yeah. have to prioritize probably two strikers as yeah. well with the way that's looking. Still need a right winger for me because I'm running Murphy. I haven't yeah, quite yeah, got the good stick to get the next. So there's five players we've just mentioned yeah. that are more of a priority than a yeah. goalkeeper. I say Pope's fine. Like, I haven't got a problem with Pope, but uh, it, next year at the latest, you're going to have to start thinking of replacements, I think. Uh, people are saying that Pope's useless with his feet, got to move on. <laughs> Ian's straight in the point all the time. He's funny as though. Dodgy shoulder, can't kick, can't punch, over 30, see ya. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, keeping it short and sweet. I like it. That's it's. Nothing but facts, to be fair. Like. It is. Brutal, facts. cold, hard. Yeah. Cold, hard facts. Uh, so, Jacob Murphy, then, on mm. the right. Yeah, that's an interesting one. It is an interesting one. Um, I wouldn't... Uh, I think for what you want as a squad player, I think he's Irish. Yeah. For now, when he's starting, he's coming in. He can't be frustrating. He's in contract goal 27 and all. So he's got a long-term deal. Good. Aye, exactly. Yeah. I, I, I just think... If we do say a new route winger, I'm fine with Murphy coming in and, and playing his role, but yeah, like he's, he's not obviously. If we're getting a new uh, one in, he can be third choice right wing. That's fine. He's not going to get a load of time. And he's a Geordie, you know, I remember. Oh, aye. Big Murphy, two, Murphy Defence League. Yeah. <laughs> Murphy Defence League, yeah. Because uh, you know, I think he's a decent squad player and, and, and you're not going to get big money from him either. So is it really yeah, going to help that much? Yeah, I don't think he's on huge wages. No. I think he can he offer something. So I, I'd keep him. Yeah. Uh, who else is next? Miggy Armoron. Sell, sell, double sell, triple sell. Buy my please. Yeah. Should have got rid of him in January. Yeah. Should have went to Saudi. 
obviously I don't think he wanted to do that's why he fell back on I think the club were definitely going to accept that offer mm-hmm. um, was Al Shabab at the time 30 million so yeah. my god 30, if you can get 30 million from him <laughs> <laughs> I would take 50, I'd take off for that. Yeah, honestly, yeah, really. uh, honestly, please, man. Uh, if we can get any sort of decent money from Miguel Almond. Even 20, because he was, uh, I think he was about 21. He maybe a little 20, bit more than 20. 20 24, 24, because he became like a record team. They had a yeah. mate on. Uh, so if, if you got anywhere around about the 20 mark, even more than 20, oh, I, I'll take your hand off for Almond. Because like, although he looks like he's 12, he's 30. He's got a kind of 26, nine. Last year, yeah. he's same one after that good pill. Actually, he's got 12 oh, goals, yeah, 12 yeah. games or something. And I was like, oh, sign him long time. He's dead good, him. Just fucking frustrates me. Like how, like, one foot of the years really, 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 <laughs> really does. find him really, really frustrating. Like, like you say, he can go through purple patches and he can do a good job, but I, I just find it just every so often, like, it's it's too purpley for me. Aye. Don't like it being too purple. Unless it's Halloween, he's not scoring goals, Aye. is he? I mean, it's only it's time like a year. fucking Dulux chart. Only time of year he scores. Um, Joe Willick, we have to see a keep. We need to get him back to fitness. I'll, I'll definitely keep Joe Willick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He need, he, hopefully so, another year. Un- he needs to un- stay un- fit as well. Squad player, he's on his way to Callum Wilson territory, yeah, this bloke. Yeah, the amount of right. games he's missing. He's still young and now. What is he? He's only 24, 25. Born in 99. Wow. Mm. Young. Mark Gillespie. Not young. The not opposite. Young. <laughs> Very old man. <laughs> Two face. Younger than me. <laughs> he's not younger than me. Get in. <laughs> yes. Get in. Just... He's, he's banging between us. Uh, so, 27th of March, 1992, Mark Leslie was born. He's still here. He's really good on WhatsApp as well, is he? Hi, um, his contract runs out this this year, but there's rumours in the last few days that you'll be off a new one. Again, if you're going to see Debrafka go, Carriers go, just, I suppose, just keep him around third choice again. But, uh, right, I, I, that's why I've never really understood the Gillespie signing, because he's not even third choice anymore. He's fourth choice. But he will be this summer, I think. Well, if Carriers and Debrafka go, and you're saying another keeper, to compete with Pope. I just, I just don't get it. I mean, he's got a great job, best job in the world, Mark Gillespie. He has, right? Like, he's, he's, he's basically our um, Rob Green. He's our Scott Aye. Carson. Because like, he doesn't have to go to training. Aye. He doesn't have to uh, go because he gets Saturdays off. Literally, thirty like, grand a week. He's got Saturdays off. He does not. He, last night was the first time he's been on the Aye. bench in months again. Unless there's an injury crisis, he doesn't have to go anywhere near the stadium. He's sitting at home, watch it on TNT. Aye. Feet up, take away. And okay, Eddie Howe could ring him in the morning, like, "Oh, Mark, I see that you haven't come to training today. Is everything all right?" Like, guys, yeah, I'm it. Just. Bit hungover, uh-huh. just couldn't be asked. Like, all oh, right, now where are you saying about then? He's been probably doing uh, that for years. I haven't even noticed he's not done it. <laughs> I know. Hey, Eddie, I haven't been in for the past three years. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> like, now where the training ground is. <laughs> Thought we'd build a new one. <laughs> so I guess we can, uh, I would sell him, but he's not actually. Well, I'll tell you contract. what, third choice, I'm not really asked, doesn't he? Well, uh, he's out of contract. If he gets a new one year deal, whatever, I couldn't really give a You're shit. You're never going to get paid. It's yeah. just, he's, probably, he's probably not even getting paid. To be honest, I hope <laughs> he's not. Uh, Elliot Aronson keep all day long. Yeah. Dan Byrne keep yeah. for me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Lucas De Boll, is he still here? Yeah. yeah. Where is, is he? I think he was on was... the bench a few years. Oh, weeks he ago. was. He was on. Uh, was at Southampton last year when he was on the bench as well. I, he's, he's on once this year, I think. Was I he? Aye? Just a, a few weeks ago, I think. I. Oh well, out loan. <laughs> yeah. Loan. Uh, long staff sell. You're not gonna like that one, you. You want to keep all long staff? I'd, I'd keep long staff for again for another year or two for squad depth while the team continues to develop. Like, he can take dumbest job as the tour guide. He's our age. Long staff to us. Yeah. He can kind of candle with his brother or okay. Well, no. Nah. Can't see Mike in Toronto. Yeah, I'd keep him for squad depth and while the club, the club develops because he, he can't be reliable. Like, you just need to get him fit because, like, no, like, as I was saying before, people have been slagging him off for his performances, but he just hasn't been fit. That's not really his problem. Mm. Like, he's doing his best. He's trying to persevere, trying to be a team player, but the best thing he could really do for the team is just take a rest. But <laughs> the, the, that's just, take a break, have a kickback. Just, so. just need to replace him, though. Get yeah. Mike back on loan. Well, um, we could do them at the minute, to be fair. So, yeah, I'd keep long stuff uh, for the short term. When's his contract? 2026. Like, do, I don't know what we'd get from I don't know what his value would be. We've That's, spoke about this a couple of times over the past few weeks. So, 12 to 15 million, maybe, but hopefully. Would you rather sell? Uh, I don't know. I don't know if I would rather sell him for 12 million this summer or keep him around for the next couple of years and just fucking let him go for free. Like, say, it's for squad depth, he's fine. I'd say just for FFP, because he's a homegrown product now academy, you get a bit more mm. financial fair play, get his wages off the books, because for me, next year, Longstaff's going to be knee when he, I wouldn't even have the, I wouldn't even have him on the bench next year, mm. because I would have Tonali, Bruno, Joe Linton, starting three. Yeah. I'd have Willick, Anderson and Mayley on the bench. And maybe a new player or not. Like, where well, you're number six. We so should what, be saying number six. What am I paying Sean Longstaff for? It'd be eighth True. midfielder. True. See you later, mate. Yeah. Um, 
Bruno Gimaresh, keep God. Let's hope we keep him. Let's yeah, really hope we keep him. Uh, Joe White, loan. Because uh, actually, you know, it is. I'll just sell him. Like, because he's on the bench, he can't yeah, get he a game. Go to, like a decent league one. He didn't league do well, and he didn't do well on loan. It was a call early field on loan somewhere else. He failed on yeah, loan, yeah. so I think just move on and hope he kicks on as a better yeah. career. Jamie Miley, obviously Louis' brother, loan. I guess I haven't seen. I can't really judge him. No, loan he's an older one now. Uh, I'm gonna do Diallo. Yes, I just skip off the owners. I loan <laughs> Tenaku loan the only one yeah, that yeah. stands out. Alex Murphy Keep loan. Murphy around. Uh, I will skip these Huntleys and Parkinsons and that. Absolutely. Louis May obviously keep, you know, I mean, what a talent, one of the shining lights of the season. And all, it? It doesn't tell you what. I went from about 20 there. quid a week to 20 grand a week. <laughs> uh, I'll be, was that Adam Harrison? I thought it was, was Adam he... Harrison. Yeah, he's the goalkeeper. Oh, right. I was yeah. Alfie Harrison from Man City who nah, we got. He's not on there. Uh, never heard of him, don't know. Uh, we'll skip down to a few of the youngest to Harrison Ashby because he's an interesting one. He's obviously on loan at yeah. Championship Swansea at the moment. Um, I'll tell you what, I, I was really excited when we were saying Harrison so Ashby. So was I, yeah. So I, was looked, looked lads, I was speaking to the lads at West Ham Fan TV and I was doing some work down in London and they were, they were good at that they lost him. Yeah. Because yeah. they were like, oh, mate, he's, he's one of our uh, top top prospects. Like, we love him. We've rated him for years. We've, we've seen and I, anyone can look good in compilations, but yeah, uh, yeah. you know, he was scoring some great goals. He's he was like a tri- flying yeah, him down. Because he can, he can take free kicks. He's a free kick specialist. He can whip the ball. Like, so, yeah, like, I think he's another one that Eddie Howe's maybe has been developing because he is still young. Like, picking him up, I think he was just trying to break into West Ham's first team, but he wasn't really in the first team. He was like, an academy player, really, wasn't he? So, like, we played in Europe for them as well. Well, that's played true. In the Europa League for them in West Ham fans. Yeah, oh, but, he's but look at. Look at Lewis Hall. I think he's the prime example. Like, even yeah. though he was playing Premier League and European football with Chelsea, was he playing the European football with them last year? I can't remember. But he was playing for Chelsea last year. It was obviously a high level Premier League. Like, they can, they've been spending about a billion pounds every transfer window. So, if he's still getting game time for Chelsea, then you can tell he's got to be a player. But Eddie Howe's been cautious with him and just making sure he's developed them enough. So, uh, he might be like that. Like, you might have just needed this loan spell. Mm. Uh, like, the majority of. Um, Dan Ashworth signings like uh, back to Brighton. He's signing a bunch of players, putting them out on loan for a year, and they'd be come back in absolute world class. Mm. But even then, he's, he could come back next year, and he's got to fight both Trippier and Livermento for a spot in this, in, in this team. That's not going to happen. So he's going to come back as third choice, uh, especially for sell Kraft, like, which is I'd probably rather have Harrison than Kraft, like a, a young lad, a, a, a kid with potential than someone that like, say has been here for a few years and yeah. just being at average. Yeah. Um, but did we sign him to be a third choice? I think we signed him to be Trippier's replacement. Uh, obviously, that was before we signed Tino. So now Tino's come in and kind of fucked that up for him. So is it worth just selling him or do you continue to develop him and either bring him back as the third choice, maybe play Tino as a left back and make Harrison yeah, yeah right back back up? Or do you give him another loan spell just to continue his development? Like, I think he's an interesting one, him. Like, I don't know. Like, they say either loan him for another year, continue his development, bring him back as either the backup right back if Tino's going to play left back or he's going to end up third choice. Like, what's going to be best for his development? If he isn't going to develop, then we've just got to sell him. I think you've got to loan him again because he's not going to get the game time to develop. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Um, right. So I think you're right there in the, in the sense that for me, that's why the craft deal might have happened because you think, right, Kraft, you're going to have another year here and then in a year's time, we'll bring in Ashby because yeah. Trip Tarantino are going to be there. Kraft can float about the place. Ashby's not going to get game time. He's not going to get minutes. The ideal situation would load him to the lower Premier, Premier League, League side. Yeah, you know what I mean? doing the Premier League. Give yeah. him uh, someone who comes up. Give him back to West Ham. Give, well, I really have the old team. <laughs> but uh, I, I, would, I would get him in to give him a, give him a chance to lower down the league and uh, Everton or something, you know what I mean? Give him yeah. a shot there. Mm. We'll sh- sh- Coleman's about 42, and he so they need a right back. <laughs> he's so he like, don't him, like he's got new web. One of the Everton <laughs> fans say the same thing, Everton podcast. So, like, that would be like they are dumb. They love him, though. <laughs> Black and white, why my comment being removed? Did I say something I shouldn't have? Unless YouTube did it, don't know. I'm yeah, what, any did comments. You what did he say? <laughs> didn't even say it. <laughs> we haven't even looked at the comments, but uh, I didn't remove a comment. I don't really care to remove comments, say what you want, but YouTube might not have liked it, whatever it was, <laughs> or you might just have. Noticed it disappeared. Ryan Fraser, wish he would disappear. Still got, still got a year left. Still got a year left, but he's actually having a good loan spell at Southampton in the they championship. I like him, but I don't know if they got promoted, would they want to take him? I mean, exactly. maybe, maybe his experience might think. Well, good on WhatsApp, apparently. Yeah. Also, <laughs> also, we got him for free. So it's not like we're cutting any losses with Fraser. No. I think even but if he's we... on fucking 70 grand, we got something. Yeah. I think that's why we put him on such a big wage because we got him for free. So saved on the transfer fee. 
uh, would just hide, hide a bag at him and just thought, come to Newcastle, get this wage, Aye. whatever. And we thought it was an Irish free sign at the time. Aye, he was, he good record, I was buzzing with us, eh? Good assist, I, I, I always liked him, but he was another one that was just too injury prone, never really got a show up when he came back, like, Took him too long. He would just get into a run of form and then get injured again. Right. So I, I loved Ryan Fraser. Um, so it's just whatever it is. Like if if we're selling, like you kind of keep him. You can't keep. Nah, nah, that's, that's the thing. Like you've got to sell him. Whatever the fee, if it's Southampton or another championship team, if Southampton get promoted and want to take him, I don't care. Even if they didn't, like just anyone else in the championship, this team mid table has probably thought, oh, Fraser's done yeah. a good job, hasn't he? Even can't even, sign for Millwall for two million quid. Yeah, so, yeah. even for less than a million. It's not going to do the greatest good for FFP, but he's on a big wage, no. and any he was a free signing, mm. so any kind of comebacks better than that, really. So even if it was fucking seven hundred, eight hundred grand, no. I'd take that for him, Fraser. Absolutely, sell, sell, double sell. Isaac Keen, his two years left. What's two? How? Who gave him? <laughs> so, was he on a ten-year deal at the season tickets or something? He might have been, eh? Price well, he, he was good back in 2018. Maybe he was, right? Hey, oh, my slap you God. on an eight year contract. He's had some mad moves as well. He's at QPR now. He played at the stadium of shite a few weeks back, didn't he? Slanted yeah. them. He, he had a nightmare spell in Belgium at Standard Liège, was it? Mm. Uh, where he wasn't getting paid, so he had to leave there. We should paid. stop paying him. Either this Liège had a nightmare, didn't they? They oh, kind of really fooled us. Either either. Like, uh, oh, they weren't, they weren't um, paying him, they weren't paying many people's wages. He, there was kick offs all over the, all over the gaff. So Hayden's now back in London, QPR. Mm. Um, I sell. You can get any money for him as well. Really good S- again. Same as Fraser. He's on 50-60. Like, yeah, same as Fraser. If you've just got rid of him for whatever fee, less than a million. We're not expecting any of these to financially put in no. good set. Like FFP aren't going to be like, oh, you got all that money for Jeff Hendrick. <laughs> they are class that. We'll get on to Jeff Hendrick in a minute. But uh, Isaac Hayden, <laughs> Brian Fraser, like, oh, that's going to fucking... Splash that oh, in the market. That's it. That's it. Get your bids in now. Yeah. The, the main get thing Hendrick is signed. the main thing is just getting them away from the squad. Get their wages off the books. Right. Didn't have to worry about them. Like who? Who, who was the ones from a few years ago? It was a uh, Henri Saive. Oh. And who was the other one? There was someone else just lingering for years. I can't Probably remember. Saive and a. Uh, that was two of them, wasn't there? Yeah, 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 I can't remember who it was. Get, get in the comments if you can remember who that was. But Saive and someone else were just here for the. Dawn of time. And you never <laughs> you just play. couldn't get rid of him. He was just he was just like a bad smell. <laughs> Not even Airwick could get rid of that gun. <laughs> but uh, like it, it, he's just gonna be like another one of them if you don't get rid of him for whatever the fee, like it doesn't matter. No. I'm not going to hold out, like, not going to start a bid more, like, ooh, we want five million, we want six million. I don't care. No, just honestly, I think you'd be happy if you got now, like, a 1.5 million or something for Hint, for Hayden. I say 800 grand, 700 grand. Yeah, it is what it is. Now, like, yeah, 1.5 mil this day and age is it's like now, 50 so, grand a few yeah, years yeah. ago in football on team. So I sell Hayden. Hendrick is thankfully going to leave. Let's give him a contract extension. His contract ends this summer. <laughs> he's Thank currently at Sheffield Wednesday. And he's on fifty thousand pounds a week, Jeffrey Hendrick. This is why that you can obviously see the damage of the previous regime. And oh, like, wow. I don't even know if all of this was Steve Bruce's idiocracy. Like, I know it he was. I Hendrick was on a free. You thought it was a great deal. Yeah, but to be fair, on a free, like it probably wasn't the worst because he was another one who was experienced. But who's giving you these wages, man? I know. Then putting. Hayden on like a fucking eight year deal. Like, whose idea was this? Fucking <laughs> Ashley and whoever the Balkan was. Um, Todd Bowley, you chose you. Lee, 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 Lee Charnley. Like, whose deals. idea was this, man? Oh, Ridiculous. Absolutely mental. So, yeah, thankfully, we'll see the end of uh, Long Locks Hendrick. Mm-hmm. Um, Grand Kual, got to get another loan because he's, yeah. he's another one like Hayden, where it just hasn't worked out for him on loans. But yeah. I mentioned the age. I like the look of him. I think Kual he's uh, at, got um, potential. At his current team there, that uh, Voldem, he there's been a nightmare scenario there. I think the manager mm. got sacked. He's been in that yeah. team. There's been scraps on and off the pitch. So it's been a terrible, unlucky place for him to go on loan. But everyone liked to look at him at the World Cup, didn't they? Thought, oh, no, yeah, yeah. Aye. No, really good uh, young talent, you know. Took on the Barcelona team in a preseason friendly. Aye, and, uh, you got was great highlight reel for, for them. So... I just he just needs a good loan spell and this yeah. and it's hard to find someone where he at, didn't have a great spell at Hearts, did he? Like he, nah. I think he scored a goal, had but a I few mean, sub appearances, but uh, it's it's a whole play. Things that are, oh, are gonna be tough. I mean, you're not gonna compare him with Harry Kane, but I'll compare his Harry Kane loan spells. He fielded about five or six clubs for it worked from his I, I never thought Kane would amount to what fad, less yeah. that loads of teams he was, yeah. they've said it. Oh, he was hopeless. Uh, and it just it doesn't doesn't work out. I think if Qual gets a a good club. A good, well-run club. Try and get him like Championship League One. Yeah. A good, well-run club. 
and if we can get, get, get a run of games, avoid injuries, get his confidence up, he, come back into the Irish. Do you know what yeah. I mean? If he went like an Ipswich switch or something, yeah. that may be a bit too high for him, but just yeah, 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 somewhere, they're gonna get promoted, somewhere like I if switch are going to get out of nowhere, though, by the way, or maybe like a uh, Adam and who was in the because you, you, these champions teams come out of nowhere, don't they? Like the if switches and your lootings and stuff. Like he was, he was getting promoted next year, maybe Sheffield Wednesday. Aye, some or a Portsmouth or something. Yeah, do you know yeah. what I mean? Like somewhere like out where you just think, oh, good fan base, good club, get yeah. a good run. That's what he needs. Uh, this is a mad one because I remember the day we signed Jamal Lewis and we did mm. a celebration video. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because Jurgen Klopp wanted Jamal yeah, Lewis. They wanted him to back up um, uh, Andy Roberts. The, he was meant to be uh, one of the best uh, left backs. Yeah, from 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 Britain. I mean, one of the best thought left backs yeah, across no, Europe. Watford. Yeah, he's still got one. He's at one Watford. Left I think he's deal. doing that right at Watford. To be fair, like I so again. Give him a couple of mil. So you yeah. Know. Uh, Shame, like, he, he was 15, a bit, he was 15 wasn't he? 15 yeah, million? we had our pants pulled down there. Because I couldn't believe... Mate, actually didn't spend 50 million on, on anyone. No, no. Like, but it was like in a week, wasn't it? We got Wilson and Fraser and uh, Lewis. I think in the space of like three days. No, we thought, like, oh, oh my God. Small <laughs> signings in a young town. Because I've never made videos like that ever. I know, because like you said, bloody uh, Klopp wanted him at Liverpool. Uh, obviously, Wilson, proven Premier League goal scorer. Fraser was class at the time, wanted by some of the big clubs. And I was signed all three of them in the space like three days. And it was like, oh my God, a little bit of ambition from Newcastle. What the fuck's going on? <laughs> obviously, Wilson was the only one that I've actually done. Exactly. Uh, but I like, like, <laughs> Just... uh, like I say, Lewis, 15 million. We've spoke about what left backs. Like, if Target kind of get a game and probably going to sell them, then sorry, like, but Lewis has got no chance. No chance. Not even worth loaning them out. Another one, like it's a shame to cut a fifteen million pound loss, but one year left on his deal. If you can get three million for him, then pff, cash that in. I'll be cashing that all. You know, and you know it is. I think he may still have a good career and good look. Them, I'm sure he will. But, yeah, 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 but maybe but he's not. A, not at us now. Not level, after the two. Like you see, with those left backs and stuff, he's not going to get much of a chance. As he to be fair, he's not nah. going to get much of a shout in. So you may as well get him off the books as well. And the last one of, of note worth talking about amongst the youngins and amongst the lone players. Is Jan Kuba Minter? Mm. I can't wait to see that. I think he's I'm top really there. looking forward to him. And like, I, I think to save a little bit of money, I, I think I said it a few weeks ago, I think he could be our right winger next year. Like, I, I really do think he's got that potential to come in and just take Almiron's spot. No worries. I wouldn't mind it. Because it, it got go, better than Perth from Almiron. Well, go, going back to the uh, Dan Ashworth style comments. Uh, that, that's what he was good at. He was just, just finding these random kids from random leagues, from teams that you've never, ever heard of, <laughs> then putting them out on loan and they would come back and be class. Mm. And from the highlights that I've seen of him, and like, he's been playing at a high level. It's like fire and all. like Champions a really League. good team. He's been playing Champions League football. I've seen a couple of the goals he scored this season. Mm -hmm. He looks mint fast. Mint. Another left-footed... <laughs> I didn't even do that. <laughs> Another left-footed uh, right winger, but can, I think he can use both feet. I haven't seen too much of him, but... He just looks the business for me. Like I think he already looks like an upgrade on Almiron. Mm. So for, for me, he could come in next season, and I don't want to say start straight away, but I, I think he could start next season. You know, I, I really think I, I hope highly of him enough to say that that I think he could fight Almiron for a position next year if Almiron stays. And I say to save money, like I say well, we need mm -hmm. a right winger, but to save money, I, I'd give him a, a real good blast. Me, like I think the good thing what you mentioned there is to save money. Yeah, we don't want to. We don't want to talk about FFP, but it's there and it's true. Because if that he, we do have, because if he is the business and you go out and spend eighty million on a right winger, then that's his career fuck. Yeah, exactly. He's gonna be on loan for the next five years. Yeah. So why wouldn't you just give him a chance? But what I was saying was that if you do have the the priority of obviously two centre backs now because the injuries, two strikers, maybe midfielder, then there you got maybe a goalkeeper. There's four, five, six players you need. Yeah, yeah. So are you really gonna be able to spend? 50 60 on a, on a winger that's going to be an upgrade on Murphy and Almiron. Yeah, yeah, no, probably not. So then you could bring in Minter, give him his, give him his chance to shine. Then if it's not working out, you could you come to January next summer and be like, right, you, you, you're too raw, you're too young. Yeah, Tell you what, yeah, that was too yeah. soon. Yeah, then next year we may have Just the money again because we've got the yeah. strikers and the center back. So yeah. I wouldn't mind giving Minter a shot. Like, obviously, a lot of people were calling for it in January because we couldn't sign anyone, weren't they? Yeah, yeah, but I think he needed that full year. I don't think it would have been good for a Stability, yeah, for his for his, to continue his development. I think just give him the full year of fine or chopping or you go to Holland it, for a few months, you come back uh, England, you come back. It's, it's, a, it's a high level, it's Champions League. Like, I don't know where um fine order are in the league, but they're like they're always like top three, aren't they? Like the, the Dutch leagues, they're not a great league, mm -hmm. but like, as long as you're fine or Ajax or PSV, yeah, fucking solid. Like you say, you're gonna be playing European football at some level. This season, he's played Champions League football, scored some mint goals, decent league. Like, I think his development's probably going to be 
10 times that of Garan Kual, who's been playing in the same league, right. but obviously for a, a team just right up in the shit. Feyenoord's a well-run unit, and he's been playing class, so that's why I, my hopes are fucking sky high for him next year. I will play devil's advocate, though, and say about the Dutch league is that Anthony looked amazing in the Dutch league. Very true. So does everyone else that's ever came from <laughs> <laughs> So... <laughs> It's a total judge. Hey, Alfonso judge. Alves. Uh, oh, Brazilian legend. <laughs> Remember, you all end with the fans, all the smoggies going to Riverside for his uh, big unveiling with a scarf. Yeah. And that day now for you. To be fair, I'm sure he's got a hat trick against Man United, and everyone was like, I tell you, no, I think he's got four. I think he's got four against Man United. <laughs> three, three or four against Man United or something. And he was like, I tell you, it was good. And he didn't score again all season. Oh, man. <laughs> Mental. But I, I'm excited with his future, and uh, I would say keep at this moment in time. Oh, like yeah, I said, yeah. unless. We have the capabilities to go out and spend big money on a, on a right winger, then yeah, because of possibly all the injuries. a loan, but certainly not sell. So. Yeah, um, right then, that's we've been going on for quite some time there one hour and five minutes. So, we'll quickly mention this news today that Newcastle are going to have a one off shirt sponsor for the game against Tottenham Hotspur at St. James Park next Saturday, a week on Saturday, because Seller are giving it up for charity. So, that's Ooh, a nice touch, isn't it? Nice, so it's still open for bidding. I haven't decided yet, but it's going to be. A, a one-off sponsor for that game against Tottenham to raise awareness for a certain charity, whoever obviously gets chosen. So that's that's nice. class crack to be yeah. fair. I like that. They've picked yeah. a, a high-profile game. It's lunchtime kickoff on yeah. TV. Spurs going for top four. Newcastle going for top six, seven, eight. So I like that. It's a good, it's a good touch. Yeah, yeah. Doing that. Uh, Seller are doing some good stuff, man. Obviously, they gave me the scarves for Dolly yeah. Day. They've been putting on buses that people can win right. uh, tickets for. Yeah, like Chelsea away the other week. That's their thing, and it's like sports entertainment, like doing the stuff venues and stuff. Yeah, it's like selling all that shit. Ah, uh, they do. They know that shit. Get your questions in if you've got any, because uh, there's too many to screw all up from, to be honest with you, from before. So we haven't got much time left. Get your questions in. A couple if you want to get them answered as we briefly look Brief. towards Fulham on Saturday. I'll be doing the full match preview as usual on Friday after Eddie House press conference, but Fulham keg on Saturday, three o'clock kickoff. Mm hmm. I was going to say Fulham were in good form, which they oh, were aye. until last night. Slip up. Got slapped up did, last aye. night. Forest got 3-0 down, 3-1 in the end. Forest missed loads of chances. It could have been <laughs> 6 or 7. I watched the uh, the highlights of their game a day. Bloody hell, Forest went in the ball, the post. Mm. Um, but Fulham have been in a good form. They did... Uh, yeah. The, the bad Tottenham are their place to be fair. Yeah, they did, uh, yeah. Obviously, man of the moment, the, the, the informed strike and the league is Rodrigo Munez. Yeah, unreal. Came out with nowhere. He's been on fire. Um, we've, we've griefed all players from Newcastle on this video, but I tell you what, the all these are performing down there at Craven Cottage. Yeah, yeah. Willian and stuff, he's been playing better than he has in five years. <laughs> then, yeah, so Fulham game. We did beat them 2-0 in the cup. Yeah. How do you see this one going? Um, it, it's a funny one, to be fair, because, like, like I said, they have been in really, really good form. Uh, there are, there can be a bit of a hitty-missy team, like the like like we said about uh, West Ham last week. Like They can, they can catch you uh, off guard. Or you can absolutely slap them up. And even when we were in our worst, like we've beat them twice recently. I think once in, was it February in the league? Yeah. Uh, no, Dece goal. December in the league and about January, February in the cup. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, like when they were in good form and we were in pretty bad form. So they're obviously a team that can be got at, even if they are in good form. And say Forest beat them. Oh, Forest absolutely fucking wiped the floor with them. Forest aren't the best of teams. So. Yeah, I, I don't think we can beat them going away. That them can be a little bit tricky, but nah, I, I do feel uh, kind of more confident about this one than I have about like some of the others that we've got coming up and some of the others in the past, like West Ham. I um, just thinking with the team that we, but they're not going to be messed with. Like I say, like no, they're, they're not being underestimated. Like, no, no, definitely not. They're definitely not. I'm, I'm not confident about it. I, I, I feel kind of good about it. Uh, it's good uh, more than I did against West Ham because I didn't really fancy word at all against West Ham. And with like like say, Tottenham and we've got Man United coming up, like I feel better about playing Fulham, knowing that we've beat them twice recently, whilst we're in bad form, they're in good form. Like I know they can be got at. So yeah, like I said, don't underestimate them. But I I, I don't know, just I, I am a little bit optimistic, perhaps. Optimistic but, um, for sure. but yeah, let's say if, if we if we do get beat, then I wouldn't be surprised because they're that kind of team that can come and surprise you. I said before the West Ham game that it was a, a pivotal week now I've seen this, especially the West Ham game because we want to close the gap on seventh. Yep. Typical Newcastle would beat the the harder team if you like and then <laughs> drew against Everton because yeah, yeah. you had to reverse that and we had a, that. We had a drew 3-3 yeah. West Ham, got a Four point. Four points, unreal. And then you beat West Ham, uh, you beat Everton Tuesday night, 
and that was four points, you'd think, all right, spot on. Newcastle obviously do it with Roosevelt, so it wasn't going to be back to back wins, it wasn't going to be that easy. But if we do get a win against Fulham, that'll be a great week in the end for me. Yeah, yeah. Seven points definitely. out of oh, possible yeah, yeah. nine. You'd snap that up like before so that. I'd no. be buzzing with that. Yeah. I really would. I just think, I think they're going to cause us problems. Yeah. I think Munez is going to cause us problems. Mm -hmm. I think the way players, I think midfield, you know, Tom Kearney, that's getting back on form. Uh, Paulinho. Paulinho, I just think they've got some players, man. They have, yeah. Silva really is a, a decent coach. Anthony Robinson's looked good. Uh, Leno was a, normally a good keeper until last night. He didn't play very well. Mm. Um, him, if he any, that's why Arsenal didn't keep him around. Exactly. I trust, not trustworthy. Mm. But, Oh, I'm not sure it's going to be a great game. I'm no, just, yeah, I'm, I'm, it's I'm a bit scared. Yeah. I'm a bit, yeah. I'm a bit nervous. Yeah, the, the are a team to be nervous about, hundred percent. Like when I said I'm, I'm confident and optimistic. Like I am being a little bit more optimistic than I should be because I, I know they're dangerous and like they can be got at. But the only thing, like just knowing that we've beat them recently, like when, like I said before, when we were in bad form, they were in good form. I know they can be got at, mm. but. Don't fucking underestimate them. No. Like, I'm not going to put a bet on that. I'm not going to say, oh, I'm dead confident about this. Three points in the bag. No, nah, not at all. Not at all. No, not at all. But I will say, oh, nah, I fancy a draw for this one. It's one one, you know, if I'm being honest. Mm. But I'm, I'm going to say that we're... Uh, I'm going to... Oh, two one. I'll go for a two one. I'll be, I'll try is is a draw a good result? Um, I mean, it's not the worst, obviously. But again... Depending on what happens yeah. elsewhere, what, what's West Ham going to do? And we're trying Man, to you've push. got Liverpool, it'll be fair, so hopefully they get beat. Because even then, like that was the thing about last night, right? We would have been two points off six. Yeah. That's uh -huh. the killer blow about That is night. the disappointment. As you, as you said, and I agree, if the West Ham and Everton games were flipped and you got them four points, you got a point off West Ham, amazing, because West Ham's Stop had a really, really good year. Away in seventh. And you, you beat Everton, then that's class. But we, in real life, we did beat West Ham. And we should have beat Everton, and them six points would have been absolutely huge in our mm -hmm. top six push. Massive. And you, you go into Fulham full of confidence, just, you think, just if, think if, then if we beat you, you, then well, bang in this race for right. the six leg. Like. But no, now, like we did, we nearly got beat off West Ham. To be fair, we won. We haven't even spoke about that. To be fair, um, we did beat West Ham, but that wasn't easy sailing. Probably should have got beat really. Uh, Everton would fumble the bag like so our performances in the last couple of games even though our four points out of six hasn't been pretty no just the comeback like I, the comeback was amazing the comeback was amazing last three minutes Everton but like in port should have scored yeah. more goals but but being 3-1 down obviously I know we had a lot of injuries but the West Ham game I said the, the comeback and the fight and the spirit you've got to commend every single one of them mm. especially with the injuries that were had like, it was an amazing result. Like one of the Premier League's greatest comebacks, in my opinion, because of the injuries and whatnot. But ultimately, we were three-one down and looking pretty shit. Like we didn't look like getting even a point out of that at one point. So that, the the fact that we did come back is even greater. But for seventy minutes, we were pretty wank, <laughs> and we we should have beat Everton comfortably, but we didn't. So mm. yeah, like although like I say four points in the last two games looks good, but it hasn't been as easy as it makes out on paper. No, I'm I'm, I'm going to hopefully back a win, though. Let us know in the so. comments what, what you think the score will be. Remember, the full preview will be on the channel on Friday afternoon. Last uh, couple of minutes, then, couple of questions we'll get through in the chat. Black and White asking, is Tonali good enough for the Premier League? Not many Italians have cut it in the Prem. Oh, yeah. I would definitely think so. Like, he looked good enough in his debut, put it that way. Yeah. Yeah. And then he obviously did. he fell off. He, he, he did, he did poor, peter off a little bit before the ban. But but I think that's, yeah, give him, give him another year. I, I think... He deserves a full year, at least, to be shown what he uh, can do. But he does look a top back, like say he tore Villa apart on his uh, debut. Unreal. And I, I was worried about that game because I think they finished last year really, really strong. They made some immense summer business. So yeah, going into that first game of the season, I was worried about that. Like I didn't fancy that Villa game at all. But us, led by Tenali, absolutely fucking ripped them apart. Mm -hmm. So yeah, if you can bring performances like that, like you just need a good run of games under his belt. Need to find the formation because I think people were saying that him and Bruno weren't quite ticking. Uh, I didn't even know who should be the six, who should balance, be the ace. So, yeah, balance. the balance wasn't great. Um, but yeah, give him a good run. Give him a give him a year or two. See what he can do to really decide is he good enough for the Premier League. Yes, it hopes over fifty five million. But like I said, so <laughs> he's done it in Champions League semi finals. So yeah. but better players than Tonali's come to the Premier League and failed. Oh, absolutely. It's the hardest league in the world. So right. there's no guarantees. Right. Like a, a lot of people like. Man United, like Anthony, for example, I'm not saying he's better than Tonali, but for an example, money wise, a lot more than uh Tonali was. People like Robinho, 
like a lot, a lot of players like Chelsea and City and United over Chelsea's the years. Any striker they've signed, maybe. They've signed like world class players. Like think of Morata. Like, who, like Chelsea, every single Chelsea number nine, who've they signed? Morata, yeah. Higuain, like, loads of players who Torres are just passed it in for them. Yeah, like technically better players than Tonali's came to the Premier League and been shite. Would Cavani. Ivan Tony be a good replacement for Isaac? Uh, I wouldn't want to replace Isaac, but Tony, Premier League proven, listen, goal scorer. I wouldn't, I, I, yeah, I, I don't like the question, Guns and Blazers, to be honest, because one not looking to replace Isaac. I hope not. No, but. Hypothetically, like Darren Neal said, we need to sell, and there's been interest. So, I'll I'll take your question as a hypothetical one. Um, if we got 100 million for I, Isaac, I know um, Brentford want about 100 million. He's good, but I don't think he's worth that. No. But if we got that, if we got that, push. if we got that money, and I think that can probably triple your FFP value. So yeah. that would give we about 300 million to spend, maybe. Then, yeah. 80 million, I'd, I'd take a punt on him because I think he is a really class actor. He's, quality, I think he's really, really he's good. So, Primarily proven. Yeah. Like, yeah, I'd, I'd love Isaac and uh, Tony in the squad. But Imagine if we had them two fighting. If, <laughs> if, if, if we had them fighting. In the league. Uh, if you had them fighting for a top spot and if, if one of them was on the bench, that can hell. <laughs> Some kind of strength <laughs> power. Like, bloody hell. Would Ortega at City like a first team chance? I'd take him. That's a good show. Let's keep that. Keeper. Stefan Ortega. Oh, I'm, not, one? No, I'm not too sure about that. Uh, to be fair, I haven't really seen enough of him to make a decision on whether he's number one worthy or not. But yeah, nah, nah, nah. I didn't fancy that one. Didn't fancy it. No, nah. I think he'd be alright. Just not. Like, I suppose there's not if, much if gonna, size to go But if we're going to get rid of everyone, like as a backup option, then I would. But to, re to, to replace Pope, then no. But to replace Debravka, Karius, and Gillespie, one hundred percent, he's probably better than all them three put together. But I don't know. I'd, I'd, for one well, number one to replace Pope, nah, I, I don't know. I'd really rate him that much. Last question and comes from Aaron. Shout out Aaron is in the, the chat as always. Man, like Aaron. Thoughts on links to Kiers that again, these links never go away. Another injury premium player who would mm. fit in on the right, but he's class. I mean, you've summed it up there, Aaron. To be fair, I think Kiers will be an amazing thing. Uh, yeah, called yeah. for it last I, summer. I wanted him in the summer. He's, like, he's, he's got, he's got yeah. what we need in terms of. Goal distribution, you know, yeah. he gets the assists, he gets the goals himself. He's he's a real threat in the final third. Um, I'm not sure on injuries. Has he had a bad injury season? I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't really know too much about his injury history, but um, Musa Diaby was my number one oh, choice. Uh, like, how uh, many times have we tied? I him? know I, I would have gone and picked him up. I'd, I'd, <laughs> I'd, 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 I'd drove to fucking Leverkusen by myself, pleaded with um, Xavi Alonso. I, I would have had him all day long. Not a nah, but, once he went to Villa, my heart was a little bit broken, but then there was the links of Chiesa, and I was like, mm, that's all right, eh? I'll have a Another slice Italian out. Italian in there. Right. So, yeah, I'll slice it up, pizza. Yeah, once we lost yeah. out there Italian. on Diaby, yeah, Chiesa, I, I, I've had my hopes held for Chiesa, to be honest, like, but yeah, I don't know much about his history issues. Uh, I don't Injuries. know what his value would be. Well, because that was the thing last summer, there was talk of him being cheap because he'd fell out with the manager. Again, I didn't know mm. the manager's still there. The really yeah, just sort of how many really. games he's played. But back in January when I was talking about him again, he was he had a great start of the season. Mm. He was scoring goals after he came back. Obviously, still gets gets into that Italian side. Oh, he's just someone that gets you excited down that right hand side. Because so, yeah, he's, he's someone who option, gets the ball on the wing, uh, who you've actually got confidence in doing something with it. Yeah. Because now when you've got Amron and Murphy and stuff, you just think, mm, is this going to come to anything? With Kiers, he'd yeah. be like. Ah, he's gonna make something happen. But going back to what we we're doing before with the the squad, so let's say you sell Allegri getting sacked apparently. If you, if you sell Almiron, you keep Murphy and Minda. They're your options. So you've got Kiesa as your starter, Minda as your backup, and Murphy as an option. That right wing looks a little bit sexy, to be fair. That's like. fine to me. That's, That's absolutely great. unreal. I'll do that right now. Yeah. Deal. Uh, I would, I would no but also, Team if Kiesa has got injury issues, as I don't really know what his problems are, then. That gives Mint the opportunity to get some more game time and Murphy is a backup option. That's all right. That's, that's fine. I'll take that. That's fine with me. It's a good question, that one. Aaron. Good question from everyone else. Thanks to everyone that has tuned in to the podcast this evening. Thanks to those that are listening on Spotify, Google, anywhere else you get your podcasts. And please do drop us a rating on those podcast platforms. That'd be, nice. be nice. That'd be nice. Five all the way up to any, five. Any, yeah. any five, don't bother. <laughs> uh, and then do subscribe to my channel TV. Give this one a like, people. And enjoy yourself.